All right, welcome to one of our first videos of the year, and this is going to be on ancient Egypt. So in your packet that you have um, with the map of Egypt, the last page I think is a chart, and so you're welcome to take notes as you go. Um, but just as a reminder, we talked about this a while back, but just an overview of um, man in the Nile River Valley, and uh, Narmer then was the first person to kind of unite the two Egypts and establish the history of a pharaoh, right, and being divine. So, <clears throat> as you perhaps already noticed, our um, Egyptian history is huge, right? One of the longest continuous histories in world history. So an ancient historian, uh, Manetho, he, I think, a Greek, um, around 200 BCE, rather than looking at it um, for each dynasty, each family rule, he divided it up into these three kingdoms. And this then, since 200 BCE, is the way we discuss Egyptian history. So uh, take a look at the dates here to get a um, sense of just how long we're talking about. And um, <clears throat> so let's begin with the Old Kingdom. So your chart corresponds to each kingdom, and we'll just talk about some of the highlights or the essentials to kind of review the notes you've already taken. So with the Old Kingdom, <clears throat> we continue to see the strong central authority develop in the pharaoh, and here's a good history vocabulary word, theocracy. And a theocratic government is any government where the political leader is also the religious leader. And it also is true in this case that the pharaoh happened to also be divine, right? Why do people listen to him? Because he's special, right? He's more than just a man. Now, he's not going to deal with all the day-to-day -day things of running a large kingdom. So he has a bureaucracy to help him do that, and a vizier who will uh, is the chief minister, right, that kind of supervises the day-to-day -day running of a government. And so the most important achievement, of course, of the Old Kingdom are the pyramids. And so we'll look at some pictures in a second, most notably at Giza. And we already saw the video from the history of mankind uh, about building, um, I can't remember which pyramid, maybe Khufu. So tomb, their tombs, right, and as soon as a pharaoh took the throne, they started building um, the pyramids. And so the Old Kingdom is the only time that they built the pyramids, uh, but we'll see other structures from later kingdoms. Uh, but, you know, it's not easy to build something this massive. So why does the Old Kingdom decline? The usual reasons. There begin um, to be power struggles over the throne uh, between family members, uh, crop failures, right? People get angry, plus they're spending all this money and time on building these pyramids, which most of the population, you know, will not enjoy. So let's talk pyramids for a while. Um, and you'll need to be able to recognize these on the test, but this is one of the oldest versions of Mastaba, and that's part one, right? So you can see as they kind of are working on the technique, and then they start to uh, build the pyramidal structure here in Saqqara. Um, and this is the step pyramid, so I call this part two, right, as they're working on their technique. And then, of course, the ultimate goal, part three, the most famous pyramids here, so you can hear some of the step pyramids and the mastabas down here, is Giza. I like this picture because you can see how the city is just right up on the edge here. Usually you see the pyramids from the other direction, so it looks like they're in the middle of the desert. Um, we continually see the kind of the <clears throat> conflict between population growth and trying to preserve antiquity. Um, and so uh, this is the most famous pyramid at Giza, and I think we saw this in our video, right, and that they put the gold top here, um, the Pyramid of Khufu, or is also known as Cheops. Um, and so you can see some restoration work and, of course, the Sphinx that comes later. Um, if you want to learn more about mummification, here's a little clip. If you click on that, it's a two-minute video. Um, and so let's take a look at the interior of these elaborate structures, right? 
Um, so you can see the burial chamber is here. But all the ways to get in and the air shafts as they're building this um, amazing tomb. And so again, what does this tell us about the ancient Egyptians? and how much of their religion and culture is devoted to death, especially among the elites. Okay, so let's go into the Middle Kingdom. And even though it started off turbulently, it becomes one of the golden ages of ancient Egyptian civilization, right? They become very wealthy. Um, we see this kind of transition in the Middle Kingdom when the pharaoh is more of a shepherd, right? That they're going to feel responsible for the welfare of the people and lead um, his people, you know, as a good example or care for them rather than a distant ruler. Um, while they were not building the <clears throat> um, massive monumental architecture, they were um, expanding, right, making new arable land for farming. They built these canals and irrigation ditches to spread the wealth of the Nile. And they also start to um, rival their old rivals Nubia you know they start to occupy Nubia to the south and kind of overcome them and this is also the time as we've discussed in class that they're starting to branch out with trading to other civilizations up in Mesopotamia and Mediterranean and it says family clip here but that's the one we already saw in class um, so um, much like the decline of many civilizations or kingdoms these guys will also be invaded by the Hyksos, which is the Egyptian word for foreign people. And so not much is really known about them. They're coming in from Western Asia, but they brought with them, as we've been talking about, bronze weapons <clears throat> and horse-drawn chariots. So the Hyksos ruled Egypt for over 100 years, but they sort of blend in with the Egyptians, like absorb their culture. And then the Egyptians, right, gain the skill of the Hyksos and turn them against them. And so then we saw the results in our battle um, in the video clip in class. Um, so the new kingdom <clears throat> um, drives out Amosis, Amos? No, I never can remember how to pronounce his name. Um, drives out the Hyksos. And we start to see then we transition because you know, during the Middle Kingdom in a time of Golden Age, the Pharaoh could afford to be a shepherd. But now that they have been invaded, uh, the, shepherd, the Pharaoh becomes more militaristic, right, and bureaucratic. Um, this time, um, we see some interesting things. One of them is that there is a woman Pharaoh, and Hesepshet, and we'll talk more about her in class. And, fun fact, I believe there's going to be a new exhibit at the National Geographic Museum about her and women in power in Egypt. But probably the most famous and most well-known is Ramses, <clears throat> excuse me, Ramses II. So under the New Kingdom, they continue to expand, right? And they're, this map shows reaching all the way into Mesopotamia and the Euphrates River. They start to um, connect with other civilizations through trade. Uh, they have a peace treaty, um, the first time maybe human beings wrote down a treaty with the Hittites, and they build up a city of Thebes um, with obelisks and statues, um, other famous um, structures that we associate with ancient Egypt. Um, so here's some of the architecture of the new kingdom, and I'm sure you can be able to recognize this on the test, right? So um, a tomb for Ramses, I mean, ponder that for a minute. We thought the pyramids were impressive, and here they are carving things out of the side of a rock and mountain. This is um, the palace for Hatshepsut. And then um, we've got our obelisks, right, with stories on them. And now some archeologists, so we can see what the inside looks like and the elaborate paintings and decorations in there and a mummy. Um, but in the midst of the New Kingdom, we have kind of this interesting story, right? Where one of the pharaohs, Amenhotep, there you go, um, and his wife Nefertiti decide to become monotheists. Um, I don't know, is this corroboration that the Hebrews were there? 
um, they have this idea of a god, a main single god, and they choose Aten or the sun disk god. And so Amenhotep changes his name to Akhenaten, excuse me, Akhenaten, which means the spirit of Aten. And so they take the capital out of Thebes and to try to show that they're going to start kind of a new direction of Egyptian civilization. The problem is he kind of ignores government stuff to in effort to form this new faith. Um, they start to lose territory and some of their gains. Uh, obviously, the priests who are very powerful in society start to get angry um, and maybe feel like he's upsetting things. And so when Akhenaten dies, Egypt goes right back to polytheism. And so um, when you see something like this, right, this disc, you know you're in that brief monotheistic phase of the new kingdom. So we see the familiar um, decorations of, I'm losing my words here, of the Egyptians, but we see the unusual element of the sun sun disc god. So because of this fear of upsetting the cosmic balance, of betraying their earlier beliefs, the priests uh, force the young son, who is probably also very well known, Tutankhamun, King Tut, to reinstate polytheistic religion. Now this king is actually very weak um, and doesn't rule for very long, but his discovery of his mummy and the treasures um, made him famous in modern history, even though at his time he wasn't very powerful. And this family was very unpopular. So when King Tut died, right, they went back to a new dynasty and reestablished their earlier religion. And then um, probably the most famous and one of the greatest rulers in Egyptian history is Ramses II. There he is. Um, he rules Egypt for an incredibly long time. Um, it's Ramses also is believed to be the biblical pharaoh, right, that tormented Moses. Um, and it's at this point, after his rule, so here is his tomb, right, we see a lot of the sculptures. But when he dies in 1237 BCE, Egypt, Egypt goes into a slow decline. And by 945, their neighbors, the Kushites to the south and Libyans to the west, take control of the Nile Valley. And from this point on, Egypt will be often um, controlled by outsiders, um, the Greeks and the Romans, um, maybe little Byzantines. And then by 700 CE, the Arabs will take over and stay there till this day. Um, so many people will uh, <clears throat> take over Egypt, but um, we cannot ignore, right? the legacy of their history. Enjoy.